everyone, and welcome again to Bible Stories. Now, our story for today is actually one that Pastor Casey touched on last week, if you were paying attention. It's from the book of Acts, chapter 4. Now, Pastor Casey, we did have this one planned ahead of time, but I think it's great timing, right? Anyways, this is a story about when Peter and John were taken before the Sanhedrin for healing a man in Jesus' name. And the Sanhedrin were pretty mad about it. Let's go see what happens. What are we going to do about the prisoners from last night? I don't know. It's obvious they did a miracle, and it's and half of half of like all Jerusalem knows about it. I know. We got to get them out of here as soon as possible and get this quiet. Let's put them on trial right now. Right in front of the whole Sanhedrin. We're all here, anyways. Guard. Yes, sir. Bring the prisoners, Peter and John, into here for their trial. They're the ones we arrested last night. Yes, sir. Put an end to this now. Once and for all. Thank you, Guard. Take your post. Now, we want to know by what authority you two are doing these miracles in. Sanhedrin, why were we put in jail for nothing besides healing that man in kindness? Look, no, no, that, no. We asked by whose power and authority you guys are doing this stuff. That's what we want to answer. By Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who you crucified, but God raised from the dead. Ugh, look, the I'm stone, not getting into that debate again. The stone that the builders rejected have now become the chief cornerstone. He knows the scriptures. What do we do? They're not, they're uneducated. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Guard, take them out of here while we confer with each other. Yes, sir. These are uneducated fishermen. They should not know the scriptures like this. Then how do they know them like this? They know them almost as good as we do. They were with that Jesus for three, four years. He was kind of a rabbi to the people. What should we do? I don't know. I know. We gotta get this out of here as soon as possible. We gotta get people quiet because everybody knows about it. And if we kill him now, everybody it's gonna knows. cause a riot. And yes. Rome will come after us again. Again. I know what we'll, I know what we need to do. What? We we should just threaten them never to preach in the name of Jesus again. Okay. We will tell them if they do, we'll stone them, scourge them, or worse. Kill him. Stoning would be killing, but yeah. Okay. Let's let's do that. Let's do that. Guard, return. All right, we've come to a decision. Guard, take your post. You two are never, and I will repeat that, never to preach in the name of Jesus again, ever. or else you will be killed. Or scourged. By whose justice do you do this? And by whose justice should we obey? Yours or God's? We will obey God's and testify in His name. <sighs> just, just you, get out of our, get out of our. Go wait, guard, get, get him out of here. Get out of here before Release we change our minds. Before we change our minds. <laughs> Whoa, those guys looked angry, didn't they? They kind of just shoved Peter and John out before they changed their minds. They ordered Peter and John to not speak in the name of Jesus, to not do anything in the name of Jesus. Did you guys catch what Peter said? Part about judge for yourselves what's right for us to listen to you guys or to listen to God. Now the Sanhedrin knew they were to listen to God. These guys were supposed to be the ones that helped enforce God's laws in the land. But a lot of times they kind of got carried away with their own interests. But Peter said something that we all need to take to heart. We need to choose individually. Do we judge for ourselves what's right? Do we listen to what others say is right? Or do we listen to what God says is right? 
That's kind of a heavy subject to think about, huh? Because all of our friends want us to do this, or a person we met wants us to, this, to do this, or our parents want us to go to bed and read the Bible, and we really want to play that new video game. Hmm. We need to do what God says is right. And the only way you can know is through your Bible. He says on every page of here what's right and wrong. Now some of it can get a bit confusing and it's not a to-do list. It's a yes do this, yes do this, or a no do this, no do this. That's not what it is at all. God wants to do what's right in our hearts. Which that means we gotta always be looking and evaluating on the inside. One of my favorite sections for evaluating is actually found in one of my favorite Psalms, go figure, Psalm 139, and it's towards the very end, and David says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me into the way of everlasting. And a couple of versions say a couple of different things, but they're basically all about this. God, Search me. Show me where I'm screwing up inside so we can fix it on the outside. So I think that's something we need to take to thought, take to heart, and apply every day. Now, we also have a Bible verse we've been going over with you guys. It's in Matthew chapter 6, and it's verse 20. And it says, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust will not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. So keep that in mind too. Our treasure is not here on earth. It's with him. So we need to be grateful for what he does give us, but don't hold on to it too tight. All right, I think it's time to pray, guys. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for your word. I thank you for giving us your word. The fact that we can know you personally. Lord, I thank you for everybody who's here, everybody who's watching. And I pray that each of them will learn as much from this lesson today as I did. Help us to search our hearts. Show us where we're messing up. And then help us to change it so that we're more aligned with you, not with people. Thank you for loving us so very much. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye.